Hey, 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 welcome back. All right, so our application so far has uh, no content. I mean, there's no markup, our pages are empty. So let's start working on the home page. Let's start showing, let's fetch the screams that we have and show them here. All right, but before we do that, let me go to the material UI documentation and show you something. So first thing is I want to implement a theme. All right, where is it? Utils, no, 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 customization, yeah, themes. Okay, so we don't have to necessarily, uh, you know, create a theme, but I want to create one. Uh, you can do so many things with the theme. You can set a color scheme. You can um, have like a font, your font size, your global styles, all this stuff. So I'm going to create a theme and just set some colors and uh, because I don't like this blue. All right, so to do that, let's go to our app.js. So here we need to bring in two things. Um, let's go right here and do import MUI theme uh, provider from mater uh, at material dash UI slash core slash MUI, not actually slash styles slash MUI theme provider. Uh, next thing is uh, the create theme function. So import create theme, oops, theme from uh, at material UI slash core slash styles slash create. Actually, it's create movie theme. Let me copy that and put it here. All right, so to create the theme, we just need to do const theme equals and we just call that function create MUI theme and here we pass it an object with some options oh oops so here we pass it this object with options and for me I just want to have like a color palette theme if you want to create yours you can go to here color and you can take any of these colors and you can scroll down and there's a color tool here. Pick your colors. You can just have the primary colors or you can have multiple shades. Uh, I've already got mine. Uh, I stored it in this text file. I'm just going to copy it. You can take the time to create yours. I'm just going to paste mine here and I'll just save. Actually, one more thing. We need to provide the um, MUI theme provider. I'm just going to cut all of this and do MUI theme provider and it has a property of theme and it's just theme because we named this variable theme and close that and let me paste everything back in it all right so now everything that's got the color primary will have this main and everything that's got the color secondary will have this main and this contrast text is basically the color of the text that's on this element and for me both colors they have to have white text on them which stands out the most so let's go to our app and there we go. The color has changed to this beautiful blue that I chose. All right. So next thing, let's let's start showing. Let's start showing the screens here. So to do that, let's go to so the home. In the home, what I want to do is I want to have a section here on the left for screens, and I want to have a section on the right for the profile. And I want to have, uh, like, if you've used Bootstrap before, you're going to have a, um, a row and inside of that we have columns. I want a column on the left that's of um, the width 8 out of 12 and the right one would be 4. And for that, we're going to use the grid system. So the grid is uh, basically this. So if you expand this, you just bring in grid, which is right here from material UI. And you just put um, the container would be grid and you add this container property. And then the elements will have this item property. So let's, let's do that here in the home. I'm gonna I'm gonna remove this stuff, and I'm gonna put grid container and close this. And then inside of here, I'm gonna put um, grid item, and this will have a property small of eight which means up to small screen is going to have a width of 8 and XS, which is extra small, of 12. So in really small screens, it's going to take uh, uh, take the full width. For now, I'm going to put the text saying uh, content. And then let me copy this, paste it, and this will be 4. And on extra small screens, it's going to be 12 as well. And this is going to be profile, profile like this. 
Let's save. Oh, we need to bring in grid, of course. Port grid from material UI slash core slash. Is it just grid? Yeah, just grid. Like this, we save and let's go back to our app. And there we go. We have this, which has, if we inspect, we'll have, oops, let me bring this. Let me put them side by side. If you can see here, takes on the full width uh, right now. Actually, I want to edit it because this is right now leaving no space between them. And as you can see here, you can have this property uh, spacing. Okay, let me look at the example, the proper example. So here, yeah, the second example. So if we would look here, it's got this, where is it? Yeah, here you give the value of the spacing. Okay, right here. So grid, spacing, and then you give a number. So for me, I want the number 16. So uh, here I'm gonna say spacing equals 16. I'm gonna save, let's go back. And right now, if we inspect, you're gonna see that this would have a padding. Yeah, there we go. So it's got a padding, which is gonna push the content a little bit to the middle, so there would be space between our element elements. All right, so let's go back to our app. So here in home, we have um, our our grid here that says content, but here we content is not enough, obviously. We wanna put our um, our screams. So for this, we need to fetch them from our server. So in component did mount, I'm gonna send the request to our server. And for that, actually, we're gonna use Axios. So let's install that, open up a terminal and say npm install dash dash save Axios. And let me go to my Firebase um, dashboard and grab the, the endpoint or the uh, base URL of our API. Let me go to the project, to functions. And if you are just doing the React bit, uh, this is gonna be in the video description of part 14, or in a comment in the first video, or in both. <laughs> All right, so I'll copy that. And if you've done the backend, of course, you know what to do. And it, so in React, the way we set up our base URL, in, instead of using it everywhere, we can just go to the package JSON and here at the bottom, we can add a property called uh, proxy. And let's paste this. And without the last uh, slash, because I want to add it on each request, because it makes more sense like that. All right, so Axios is installed, so let's bring it in. So import Axios from Axios. And here in the component did mount, we can do axios.get and here we send a request to slash screams and if you remember or if you've seen the back end okay let me send this request this is the type of data oops it's a get request and remove the body so this is the type of data that we're gonna get this is one scream it's gonna have this these properties so here to slash screams of course this returns a promise so then result uh, what we want to do, we want to store these screams in uh, the component state. So let's initialize that. So state state equals an object and it's got screams and that's going to have an initial value of null. So here if we get a result successfully, we do this dot set state. And in the state, we set the screams to, because this is Axios, we don't just say response. Uh, the data is actually stored in a key called data inside the response. So you do res data and let's handle any potential errors. If there's any error, we just console log it. Error. Cool. All right. So let's actually um, show our screams because right now we're just fetching them. And when we get them, let's, you know, just in case, let's just console log them and see res.data. Cool. All right. So here, content, we get, we want to put like a variable here and let's call it, um, we haven't created it yet, but let's just call it, because these are the recent posts, excuse me. I'm going to say recent screams uh, markup. And let's create that. So here, let's say let recent screams 
markup equal and what we want to do here is we want to check if we have screams in the state if the screams in the state are still null that means uh, are still null that means we're still loading them we're still fetching them from the server the, the request hasn't got a response yet so we can use this in a ternary operator we can do this dot state dot screams as a condition that means if it's if it's not null that means we've got the data so let's actually show the data so what we want to do here let's do parentheses and let's do this dot state dot screams so if it's true that means it's got some value in it it's not null so this dot state dot screams dot map and for each scream let's for now uh, let's for now return just return a paragraph and in that paragraph we put we open bra uh, curly braces and remember this is the data we get let's show the body so let's go back so for each scream let's show scream dot body and as you see right now we have only two screams all right so for each one we show that else if it's still null then we'll just show a text that says loading dot 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 all right and we put that markup uh, variable there and we save cool it compiles successfully we go to our app and it says loading because and require status 404 oh there's another problem here for materially materially why because of uh, the typography are we even using typography oh, we need to add this to our theme I've seen this error before so we go to app to our theme we add this property at the bottom typography use next variants and that error should be gone but we're still not getting our screams because we get error 404 localhost 3000 slash screams is not found maybe we need to rerun our dev server when we change the proxy let's let me do that so I stop it and run it again All right, so yeah, we had to restart our server and there we go. We get the text for the body text of our screams. Uh, for each scream, we get the body text. So the first one says, hello user, and the second one says something. So there we go, we get them, cool. Uh, let's actually show them in a better way. We show who posted them and when and stuff like this. Now for this, we're gonna need to have, um, to create a compo, where, where are we in home? Let me close this and this. So here in the home, uh, we need to sh actually use a component uh, that's specifically made to show as details for screams. So let's create a component. Let's say here scream, and for scream we pass we actually pass a property called scream, which is going to be the scream. And let's close this. Let's import it and then create it. So import scream from, and then we're going to put it in. Uh, so go back one level and go to components, do slash scream. So let's create this. So here, let's do new file scream. Of course, this is a component, so it's um, it's Pascal cased. So the first first letter is a capital. So let's do RCE tab. Let's remove this export. Uh, now for this here, like I know we're gonna do some styling later. So let's. Let me show you something in the Material UI. Material UI, they prefer to use this CSS, um, JSS uh, type of styling where um, where you actually write, uh, write an object, a JavaScript object, and then use a higher order component to apply those, um, those styles and make them into classes and then use them. If you know, uh, if you wanna see an example of that, let's go to, for example, buttons. And as you see here, they import this uh, with styles component or higher order component. And then they create a styles object. And it's optional if you want to bring in the theme, the global theme that you created in your app.js, you can do that. So any stylings that are kind of shared between components, you actually write them in the uh, theme in app.js and then get the theme and then use them there so you don't have to repeat yourself in multiple components. So it's like this, you bring in with styles, you create your styles object, and then you export your uh, component with this higher order 
um, component with styles. So you pass it that styles and then you pass it your component. And then this will create an object called classes in the properties of this component. And then you get the classes and then you use it like this. So for each component, you say class name equals classes dot button. And now these styles in the button will be applied to this button right here. So let's, let's implement that. Okay. So let's, for now, I'm just going to put like some random style just to apply this method first. So here we'll have styles. And here, um, well, we're going to have a card. So let's put here for the card. Let's just say display flex, which I don't think changes anything. And let's bring that with styles. Well, it doesn't change anything for this example. Of course, in many cases it does. So let's do import with styles from material at material UI slash core slash styles slash with styles. And then we go here at the bottom, we do export defaults with styles and then open parentheses and pass the styles constant to this one, close parentheses, open parentheses, and then pass our uh, component screen. Now this will give us access to a variable classes in the properties. So inside, actually inside the render, we can destructure this variable. We can say const, uh, like this, when classes equals this dot props. And of course, this is the, this is the equivalent of saying const classes equals, um, this dot props dot classes. This is called destructuring. So anyway, so now we have classes, we can actually uh, access them, but let's create the markup of our, of our screen and each of our screens is going to be a card. So let's look at the card element. So if we go to cards, component demos cards, uh, this is the card. This is one of my favorite elements in material design. It's this card that actually has these, the side shadow that looks, it's kind of like on top of the background, like kind of extruded a bit. So this is what we're going to use. We're going to have an image, but it's going to be on the left. So this is the kind of, um, the kind of structure that we're having. We're going to have a card with a card media. Uh, let's take some of these, um, imports. So namely these four right here or these five, let's paste them up here. Let's say Mui stuff and space these, but we're not going to need actions or action area. Let's delete these. Let's do card. Oh no, not like this card. And inside of card, we're going to, first thing is going to, we're, we're going to have the image. So card, uh, media, and this will have an image property. And this will be the image of the, uh, if you, the image of the post of the screen, it's going to be in a variable called user image. So let's do a uh, image equals screen. Or actually, let's just say user image. Let's extract all those um, those properties. So let's do const. Or actually, it's in the props as well. So the screen is in the props. This remember, guys, the screen that we pass here. Excuse me, is in the props. So here we we can we can further destructure properties from property from an object inside of props by doing this. So screen like this and then we do colon and then we do another object here and then we uh, extract properties from inside this screen so what we need is um, we need the body uh, we need created at user um, image we need the user handle uh, I think this is all we need for now maybe the screen ID well, let's get all of them, the like count and then the comment count. All right. So this will extract them and we're going to access them like this. So, all right. So the, we have the image, so it's, there is this title property for the card me card media. Let's say profile, oops, profile image. If I can spell. All right. So after card media, we're going to have uh, our content. But I want to, or, or just, let's, let's just put card content for now. Let's not worry about the styling for now. 
let's look at what it looks like and then style it. So here we're gonna have the um, the handle of the user. So let's, let's, we're gonna use this thing called typography. In uh, Material UI, it's uh, preferable whenever you have some sort of text that you wanna show, you wanna use this typography um, object. So here, if we go to component demos, oh, actually it's up here. Yeah, in the style, typography. Typography is uh, any type of uh, text you have in your app, you use typography and then you give it a different variant, which is gonna give it a different uh, size and styling. So for this, we're gonna use typography. And by the way, whenever you're confused with these objects, you just, um, or with these components, you can check them, uh, the documentation and the API, component API. And you can as well, when you put, a, uh, they have types. So when you put a component, you can press control space in VS code and you can see all the properties. Oh, actually I haven't imported it, so we can't see any. <laughs> okay, so let's import typography from material UI slash core slash typography. Now, if I press control space, there we go. We get all the properties that can exist on this. And then if we type, let's say one of them, which is variant and we do equal, and then we can get as well more properties here. Uh, for this, we're gonna use the header five. We want it to be slightly big. And let's close this and let's say the value will be user handle. And then after this, we wanna sh show when this was posted. So let's do typography variant is it body Bod let's give it body two okay body two and let's give this a color of text secondary which makes it a bit gray because we don't want it to distract from the content it's just like metadata so this will be the created at and now we want the actual body of the uh, of the of the screen so typography variant um is it body body one let's give it body one let's see what this looks like all right so this is the screen all right let's save and let's save here as well it's compiling it complains that we didn't use those variables uh, let's look at our app. All right, so there we go. We get our card, but there's the color of the card and the color of the background are kind of the same. So let's change that. Let's go to app CSS uh, in the global CSS. And actually here, the body, I want to give it some sort of background color. Let's give it like a very light gray, uh, RGB. I'm gonna give it 245, 245, 245. And let's save. Cool, so we have now gray and these cards are white, so they stand out. Um, let's give this some kind of like margin. And this should be a link to the user's page. Uh, here, scream. Actually this, we wanna give it the component uh, link and the two oops two not co two will be uh, actually a template string so curly braces back ticks and let's do slash users we haven't created this page yet but let's just do slash users and then pass user handle um we need to import a link import link from react router dom slash link all right, let's check our app. Oh, this is underlined and the color is still the same. Let's fix that. So here, let's give the anchor tag globally. Let's give it no text decoration. So text dash decoration, oops, decoration, none. And to change the color, let's go to scream. Uh, where are we? We're here. So to change the color, we're just going to give it the color primary to get the our blue color. Uh, let's save everything. Cool. So there's no underlining and the color is blue. We click on it and it takes us to slash user slash Johnny. Cool. But we don't see the image actually because 
for some reason it has zero width. Can we inspect this and try to fix this? So, oh, it's it's oh, it's in a div. That's that's interesting. Uh, let's just actually um, edit some styling here. So starting with the card, I want it to have a, a margin bottom, margin bottom, so that we'll have some space between the cards. Let's give it twenty, and I think that's it for the card. Let's edit. Um, let's give this a class of classes dot uh, details, which we don't, or let's say content because it's the card content. And let's give the card itself class name of classes. Remember, we have this classes object, so classes dot card. Oh, we actually didn't give it earlier. And where's the image? Do I give the image a class? Yes, I think so. Okay, classes, class name equals uh, classes dot image. We go here, let's give image some styling. Uh, let's give it a minimum width of 200. And yeah, that's it. Let's style the content. So content. Um, what do we want to do actually? Okay, let's give it some padding because it's too close to the edges. Let's give it like padding of 25. Uh, let's see what it looks like. All right, so we get the image now, but I think the image is kind of being stretched. Okay, I don't like this. Uh, wait, let's do object fit. Uh, no, cover. It's the same. But I think if I were to make this div longer, it will stretch this because uh, we need, let's let's give it object fit cover because that's a good property to give your images so that they don't get uh, stretched by the uh, change uh, the changes of the dimensions of the image. All right, let's save this and let's look at this. All right, it's looking much better. Of course, we need to format this because we don't want to show this ISO time string. But uh, this video is getting a bit long, so let's continue in the next one. Uh, yeah, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.